If you are watching us live on our Facebook stream, please feel free to comment your prayers, thoughts, and intentions. If you're watching us this morning on our website, our DCAT, thanks for tuning in. And if you're watching us later today or this week on our YouTube channel, we hope this Mass brings you comfort. For those of you here in church, thanks for coming out. Please remember, it is critically important for you to register online if you are coming to church. We also ask that you please silence all the electronic devices. No matter where you are or how you got here, please know you are always most welcome at St. Richard's. The theme of today's liturgy is, Let us bless the Lord who made heaven and earth, who pardons our sins and crowns us with compassion. Today's Mass is being offered for your special attention. The presider of the Mass is Father Bruce Flanagan. The cantor is Katie Freehorn. And the keyboardist is Jeff Patch.
us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sarah. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, but he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and accept healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. But this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. The word of the Lord.
offend her again, but uh, uh, I, I was actually grateful that uh, she took the opportunity uh, to uh, bring that to my attention. Not that I remembered what I had done or even cared to know what the story was, but that she had the opportunity to get it up and out of her so that she could let it go, that resentment could get out of her life. And uh, it uh, taught me uh, yet again, because I have a great forgetter. I forget a lot of things uh, that I should remember on a regular basis. I don't know. Anybody can relate to that? Yes. Um, but uh, she taught me uh, to again stop and think about forgiveness. And there are so many angles to it, but it is. Uh, Really very simple. God forgives us. Whether or not we are aware of it, whether or not we take it into account, whether or not we appreciate it, He forgives us. Period. Even before we know we need it or choose to ask for it, He forgives us. Peter in this Gospel says, uh, how many times should I forgive, Lord, if someone offends me? Seven times? With a little history of understanding, uh, in Jesus' time, in the Jewish law, it was required that you were only allowed to forgive, only had to forgive three times. After that, you didn't have to. So Peter was being more than generous. He was more than double the amount that Jewish law said you needed to forgive. And Jesus, as always, took it one more giant step. And he gave no limit to the amount of forgiveness or the number of times we were to forgive. Forgiveness has a lot of uh, a lot of potential in our lives, as does resentment. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important to know uh, uh, what direction we need to go in if we have to follow the Lord. There's a story about uh, a husband and wife who uh, uh, often would resolve their conflict by not speaking to one another. And so it just happened that uh, uh, what others would think were uh, peculiar actions. And this couple didn't speak for over two weeks until the husband one early afternoon said, uh, well, what are we going to have for supper? And uh, she said, oh, so for food you're going to talk to me? He said, what are you talking about? She said, you haven't talked to me for over two weeks. He said, oh, I wasn't holding resentment. I just thought we were getting along. <laughs> holding resentment, uh, some people say it's like taking poison and then expecting the results to cause the other person whom you have the resentment against uh, to get ill. And yet the truth is, it's eating away at your system. Resentment uh, and, and forgiveness go hand in hand. And if we, uh, if we listen to the Lord, forgiveness is a, a must in life if we're going to be healthy human beings. Forgiveness is a necessity for us to be able to not get caught up and held back by the limiting effects of resentment. It is a, a powerful force, one way or the other. Resentment boxes us in, closes us up, and sometimes shuts us down. Forgiveness 
breaks down the walls, opens the doors and windows, and refreshes our soul. If we listen to the Lord, He's encouraging us to find forgiveness. Sometimes that forgiveness is hard fought. In other words, the hurt was so deep and so profound that it's going to take a long time to work through forgiveness and let it go. We have to keep going back to it over and over. And if it, if it is that situation, then we are encouraged to break through the circle, go and get some outside help. It's really smart to do that. So that we can open the windows and doors with help. Whereas without that help, we don't even know how to unlock the window, let alone push it up. And we know that it's important to forgive ourselves in the midst of it. A lot of times we've done actions that we are ashamed of or are angry about that we let ourselves get to that point. And we need to invite the Lord in to heal us in that way as well. Forgiving ourselves is important. One more point. I think it's important as we're walking through that forgiveness so that we don't get stuck to invite the Lord in. In other words, Find some time to pray for the one or those who have caused the resentment. Pray for them. Pray that God will help them see what they need to do in their life. And pray that they might be free from whatever is affecting them as well. And I think you'll be overwhelmed, surprised in an overwhelming way of how that prayer changes you. A simple story. A little boy, six years old, was out to, uh, to dinner. It was a big deal he knew how to act in the, in the restaurant now. He knew how to be civil. He knew his manners. And he was following them to a tea. And his parents were very proud of him. And his other siblings were watching him, as the older ones always do. Uh, and uh, so his, his mother said, uh, would you, would you lead us in prayer? Just say grace before we have dinner. And the restaurant was kind of full. They didn't have to social distance because this pandemic had not yet hit. And so the little boy put his head down and he said, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for helping us to be able to go out to dinner. So my mom doesn't have to cook, and my dad doesn't have to set the table. Thank you for the good food we're going to have. And thank you for my family. And if mom says we can have ice cream for dessert, I'll thank you even more. Amen. table, overheard the little boy's prayer, as everybody else around did too. And she said, isn't that awful, the way he just prayed, manipulating God? 
using him to get ice cream. Little boy started to cry. He said, Mom, did I do something wrong? Did I not pray the right way? And she said, Son, you did a beautiful prayer. And we're all very proud of you. And I want you to have a banana split <laughs> with three big scoops and sprinkles all over it and whipped cream. That's what I want you to have at dessert. And so the meal was done. Everybody did their mannerly things. And now dessert came. He was looking around. And as he looked around a little bit more before he dug into his banana split with coffee, and strawberry and vanilla ice cream. This older gentleman from the other side of the aisle came over and said, Son, that was the best prayer I ever heard. When you have ice cream, it sweetens your soul. And I'm so glad that your mom ordered that for you to keep your soul sweet. And he went on his way. And the little boy, he put his head down. And his mother said, I, I didn't know what he was doing. Maybe he's saying prayers again. Thank you, God. Didn't know what he was doing. And all of a sudden, he put his head up. He stood up. He picked up the banana sweat. And he walked over to that lady who condemned him. And he put it in front of her and he said, just dig in and enjoy it. <laughs> I love that kid. He understood what God was asking of him. To sweeten his own soul with prayer and to help others who need it the most. I don't know if she dug in at all, but it would be a shame to let go of a banana split right in front of you. And we have that opportunity every day to dig right in and to make the world a sweeter, better, wonderful place to live.
one. Help us to choose wisely what we consume, what we share, what we think, what we believe. And so we pray. That the church serve as a beacon of reconciliation, leading others in the ways of harmony and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations locked in disagreement break the ancient bond of hatred and seek healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who worship the God of Abraham, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, foster peace in the world through mutual forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are burned by the weight of resentments find solace in today's lessons of compassion and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly mirror God's mercy in the way they care for one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions presented online today, and especially those held in the silence of our hearts, that the Lord hear them, heal them, and continue to bless us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Ann and Claire, John Sabina, and John Churchill, who were buried from our church this week, that they might know the refreshment of souls unto eternity in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God, restore us, give us courage to follow your way, help us to overcome our pride and seek reconciliation unto eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, 
Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and, and seasons. You formed man and woman in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. We 
thanks to our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. May you share in the appropriate ways for the sign of Christ.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen.
Judith Lambert? Not yet. Let's stand and pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and our bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ to our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you abundantly. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Go in peace and trust in the way of the Lord. We're going to have a little direction on how to receive Holy Communion. Communion will be distributed from the back of the church as you leave Mass. Row by row, exiting from the back, will be directed by the usher. Parishioners may well decide not to receive Holy Communion if they feel the risk is too high and that decision will be honored and respected. The communicants of Father Puss will wear masks. The communicants should not wear gloves during the distribution of Holy Communion. Father Puss will hold the consecrated host over the communicants of stretched hands and drop the host into the hands without touching the hands. Communicants will receive the consecrated host in their hands, exit the church, lower their masks, consume the host, and proceed to their car. In the case of unintentional contact, the priest will sanitize his own hands immediately. 